So Hattie, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? How did you get here, girl? Nine that was so easy. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. We have Hattie Bear. <laughs> Hattie made it to Hawaii. She was allowed in. This is how you bring your dog to Hawaii by avoiding the six month quarantine. Cause you don't have to do that. You don't, just takes a little planning ahead. And stay for the end cause we'll introduce Hattie and why she wears her nervous jacket. And then a little bit about her. She's an interesting girl. Hi, I'm Jordan. And I'm Erica. And this is the Hawaii Vacation Guide. All right, so we moved to Hawaii a year ago, which is crazy to think about right now. We moved from London, England. We were there for six years where I was working, and we decided to come over to Hawaii. And one of the hardest parts was bringing our cute little dog, Hattie, over here with us to Hawaii. And uh, so Erica did all that planning, and I moved us. I did all the, everything else. And I think that was about <laughs> equal in complexity. Yeah. So Erica, how hard was it to bring Hattie to Hawaii? It really wasn't that difficult. I will say it, it takes, <laughs> it just takes a lot of planning, a lot of communication, a lot of paperwork, and it was very expensive. Like to be quite honest, it was very yeah, pricey. Yeah, um, the first time we moved to Hawaii, we moved to Oahu and we didn't have a dog to bring. No. We didn't have a child. Things were a lot easier. This time we had a dog yep. and she added in a lot of complexity. So people would ask, they would say, when we told them we were planning to move here, um, they would say like, I would love to, but I would never subject my dog to that six month quarantine. And I'm like, well, we're not going to either. <laughs> and so this is how. <laughs> this nervous little girl, can I handle quarantine? She doesn't yeah. like other dogs. Yeah. All right, so if you are planning to move to Hawaii and you wanna bring your dog, start planning early. So we started the process about six months before we moved. It was a long process. And part of that is because she is from London. And London is a rabies free country, much like Hawaii is a rabies free island. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so challenging to bring a dog here is because it's rabies free. They want to keep it that way. They want to protect what they have here. Fully understand that. So we were coming from a rabies free island and had we just traveled directly to Hawaii, it would have been very easy from one rabies free island to another. No problem. <laughs> but we were stopping on the mainland and mainland USA before. And so we had to get her her rabies vaccines because the mainland US does have rabies. So you have to get two, at minimum of two rabies vaccinations and they must be 30 days apart. So that's mm. step one. You've got to start with the vaccine. So we got one rabies vaccine, waited 30 days, got another rabies vaccine. That was step one. So that's one, why you got to start early because 30 days right there just for the vaccine to get in the blood system and. Re recreate, reproduce. Yeah. The biggest part in this whole process is a blood test. And what this blood test is, it's an antibody test. So they want to make sure that your dog has enough rabies antibodies to protect them. Um, so that is the thing that like your whole ability to come here without having your dog in quarantine hinges on your dog passing this test. So. All right, so we talked about getting rabies vaccines. I messed up. I should have said step one is to make sure your dog is microchipped mm -hmm. because that is how they track your dog through this whole process. Oh, okay. So you have to make sure your dog is microchipped. In our case, we had to make sure that the UK microchips could be read by the US microchip readers. Would that be a problem in the US? Do they have to make sure? Is there enough like? No, just make sure it's a functioning microchip. So mm -hmm. when you go to the vet before you get a rabies vaccine, have them read the microchip, make sure it's working correctly, because otherwise you have to start the whole process over again if the microchip isn't working. So make sure the microchip is working, get your vaccine, okay. wait another 30 days, get another vaccine, wait another 30 days. Oh wow, okay, so that's two months now. All and right. then get the blood work done. Mm. So this blood work, you go to your vet, there's a very special lab that this blood work needs to go to. All of this information is on the Department of Agriculture website. They have a nice checklist. I found it to be mostly helpful, a little bit confusing, but I just asked questions when I had, you know, difficulty understanding what was going Do on. Do they get back to you pretty fast? Super you? fast. Oh, okay. Rabies, I think it's rabiesfree at hawaii.gov. I think that's the email address. Link below. We'll link it all below. We're putting it in an article. Um, super, super speedy with their responses and really, that's really nice. helpful. That's nice. This blood test. So this blood test, the vet draws the blood, 
sends it directly to one of two approved labs. So these labs... Yeah. Have Tell us to, about the labs. <laughs> the labs were fine. Um, <laughs> it was challenging for us because we had to send it from the UK. Yeah. And that was just a thing, right? Like transporting dog blood internationally. <laughs> it's just kind of weird. <laughs> but so your vet will send the blood directly to this lab. The day after the lab receives the blood work starts a countdown period. Oh, okay. So from the day after the, <laughs> the lab receives the blood, so say the lab receives the blood work on September 1st, start, starting September 2nd is a countdown period. And you may not come to Hawaii in the next 30 day window with your dog. You have to wait at least 30 days from September 2nd before you can arrive in Hawaii. And that's a tricky countdown window if you're juggling a lot of things like we were. Yeah, so, so that's three months now we're talking about. Rabies a month, month for blood work, then another month for yeah. this countdown. So okay. you can really get it done in three months. I would say six because, you know. Things go wrong, yeah, confusion. Yeah, things definitely yeah. go wrong. Things right. definitely go wrong. <laughs> um, so the countdown starts day after the lab receives the blood work. Okay. And you have have to wait a minimum of 30 days before you can come to Hawaii and a maximum of 36 months. So this blood mm. test doesn't stay good forever. Um, if it's longer than 36 months before you know, you're coming to Hawaii, you're gonna have to redo the whole process. So the lab does the blood work. They will tell you, they will get back to you and tell you whether your dog passes or fails. And they're measuring the antibodies. They're measuring okay. the antibodies. They need a certain level of antibodies in the dog's blood. And the vet that we had in England says sometimes dogs do fail. And that's why you want to have a cushion in there mm. because if she for some reason didn't have enough antibodies, we would have to do another vaccine, which is, you know, another 30 oh, days. Wow. So it just okay. it takes a while. Yeah. Huh. Um so then the lab, they will tell you what the results are. They will also send the results directly to the Hawaii Department of Agriculture. So they receive the results directly from the lab. Gotcha. Hence the microchipping. The microchipping yeah. is important. Also, you can check the Department of Agriculture website. I believe there's a way to check um, the with your mic with your dog's microchip number to make sure they've received the results. So nice. they have a nice little database that you can use. Whew, it was a lot. Okay, so now you have like all the tricky testing done and your dog has gotten the A-OK. -okay. The Department of Agriculture has your blood work. Time to go move to Hawaii. Time to do your paperwork. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not moving yet. <laughs> You're not moving yet. All right, so you have to fill out an import form. Um, you have to send that plus the original certificates from the rabies vaccinations. That plus the import form, plus your flight information, plus your vet information to the Department of Agriculture. If you're coming to a neighbor island like we are, we were, um, you have to apply, you have to get a vet to meet you at the airport. Or oh, neighbor island compared to Oahu. Compared to Oahu. Yeah, yes. yeah. So if Sorry. you're going to Oahu, you don't, yeah, it's different. Yeah, if you're, okay. but if you're coming to Maui, um, the big island, Kauai, like you need a neighbor island inspection permit. Mm. And so that takes another 30 days for them to complete for you. I know, you guys, this is like, wow. it's like 30 days, right? So yeah. you send all of this paperwork in, your dog has the blood work done. You send the original vaccines in, you send the import form, you send your flight info. Um, that has to be received in Hawaii 30 days before you are going to travel here because they need to check it all. They need to check with the vet on the island to make sure you have hired them to meet you at the airport to do the direct airport release program. And then they need to print up your, um, what's it called, the permit? permit, thank you. They need to print up your permit, send it back to you. So. And the, and the airport this. would ask for that too, right? When the airport wants to see it before the dog gets on the plane? Before you get on the plane. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have that permit done. So, once you have that permit in hand, then you can move to Hawaii. There you go, piece of cake, everybody. Yeah, no big deal. And I gotta admit, when we landed, it was great. Right at the end of the jet bridge was the vet waiting for us. Yeah. And her green outfit, and she was super nice. Had to use a little cranky from the flight, but it literally took like, two minutes, the yeah. vet just checked the paperwork, checked Hattie, and wished us... Scanned the microchip yeah. to make sure it's the same dog, so yeah. that microchip is super important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. then, um, and then we were on our way. And, my mind. and then Hattie lived in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> that was so easy. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. We have Hattie Bear! <laughs>
Daddy made it to Hawaii, she was allowed in. So if you don't do any of that stuff, no blood work, no rabies, what happens? You can just show up in Hawaii? You can show up in Hawaii and they're gonna take your dog for a six month quarantine, which yeah. they don't wanna do. Also, you have to pay for it. Will the airline let you on the plane if you don't have all that stuff? Uh, they might not. They might not, because mm. when we checked in, so we flew Alaskan, we loved flying Alaskan Airlines because they were so helpful with yeah. Hattie. She was able to come in cabin with us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they're still doing that, but they were. Um, and they checked all the paperwork before we got on the plane. They wouldn't have let us on the plane without the permit. Yeah, okay. So, all right, so it might not even be able to get that far with it. I forgot one more thing you have to get. One more piece of paperwork, for, no more than 14 days, 10 to 14 days before you leave Hawaii, the airline, or before you leave the mainland for Hawaii, your airline wants to see a certificate from the vet showing that the dog is in good health oh, before yeah. the mm -hmm. dog flies. So that's not a Department of Agriculture Hawaii need, that is an airline need. Oh, that's a good tip so, right there. Let's talk about costs a little bit. Yeah, please, yeah. So I believe we, uh, I believe our vet was to meet us at the airport. I think she was $400. Okay, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was four hundred dollars. Maybe it was a little less. Um, your permit fee is one hundred and sixty-five dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. For a neighbor island inspection permit, I can't remember how much the blood test was. We're a vet in England for all the, for the, the two vaccines. rabies. Yeah. Yeah. So probably um, depends where you're living. Yeah, those mm -hmm. were probably a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Plus the, the health check from the vet for the airline. It was another seventy-five dollars. Mm -hmm. You guys, it like very much added up. Yeah. Plus, you have all of your paperwork, you overnight it via FedEx to Hawaii, which is oh, $20, yeah. and then you send, we at least sent another envelope or another uh, label so they could overnight it back to us because we were working on tight timelines. Mm. That was another $20. It just all adds up. It's a lot. So, so this video is here to help. Go to the Hawaii website for information too. Kind yes. of supplement that. Yes, so it. we'll drop the link down below. Yeah. We also have a link to our article outlining the whole process mm. and the timeline. Like I said, start six months in advance because yeah. it's a lot. It's big. And that's that's a big one, right? This video is for people moving to Hawaii with their pet, mm -hmm. right? With your dog. Uh, do not try to bring your dog here on vacation for fun. Not mm -hmm. worth it. Even I mean, even if you're coming for a few months, it probably isn't worth it for you. And, and that's you have to make up your own yeah, mind, but it was name. a lot of work. But that's the thing all. is with Hawaii, this is a rabies-free island and there's a lot of invasive species here already and other diseases and they're trying their best to keep it rabies-free. So it just shows respect. Come to another place, especially beautiful Hawaii. That's why they require all this paperwork. They're just doing their best to keep this island rabies-free, which is really important. Really important. Yeah. I mean, there are very few places in the world that are rabies-free. So like, yeah. let's keep it that way. And totally. all the paperwork is worth it because she gets to sleep on a couch in Hawaii. Instead <laughs> of in England. Yeah. All right, so let's introduce you to Hattie here. Okay. So, full name is, her full name is Harriet. I was going to put her on my lap. She looks pretty comfortable back yeah. there. <laughs> her full name is Harriet. We picked her up at the Battersea Shelter in London. She was a stray. We have no idea how old she is. And it was funny, when, they got, when we got her, they're like, oh, she's six years old. But we took her to a vet, and the vet's like, she's anywhere before, between four years old and ten years old. We're like, wow, that was helpful. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we've she, had her for four years. Four years now. Yeah, she's got some gray hair. She's got all her teeth, and she's a healthy little girl. She yeah, likes it. She's probably gonna outlive us. And, uh, so because she's a stray, we have we don't know any of her history, where she came from, where she was before. Mm -hmm. We just know she's very English. She's a Jack Russell Terrier. She we think she's a miniature Jack Russell Terrier because she's so small and her um, fur is really soft. She wears a nervous jacket because. You'll see this in all the videos. People ask us all the time, is her name nervous? And it's not. Uh, but the idea is for wearing this is to kind of warn people um, to, to maybe not pet her or not come up to her too fast because she's shy and we don't know her history. She can get a little scared. She gets very scared yeah. when people come up to her and we don't want her to do something that we'll regret yeah. on it too. And then also too, she's not a big fan of other dogs. So it's kind of warn other people with dogs like, hey, you know, don't bring your dog up to her. Definitely not too fast because yeah. she'll, she'll get freaked out also. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we don't know her history probably related to that. We also, she was attacked by a larger dog and when we had oh, her. So scary. It yeah. was terrible. She yeah, a almost died. Mm -hmm. So she just has a lot of, you know, baggage, but we love her. She's a <laughs> wonderful family dog. She's great around Henry. They're just great together. She's yeah. so patient mm. and we're so happy she was able to move with us because we wouldn't have moved without her. Let's be honest. She's a part of this family and we love her yeah. so much. So we hope this video was helpful. Best of luck moving your dog or your other animals to Hawaii. 
If you want to move out to Hawaii, we have another video on tips and things that we learned about moving to Hawaii. So click subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.